Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Um, back at home now after spending a month in the UK, had a wonderful Christmas and New Year with friends and family and I also um, got that Copark Kawasaki, um, brought it, repaired it, put it back on the road. If you've not seen that video, please check it out. Uh, great success that. Anyway, back to the RD. Just as I left it, which is good. Um, so um, I've got some white spirit here because um, when I split the engine again uh, to get the crank in, I need to clean off all of the gasket seal around here, make sure those surfaces are nice and flat. Um, and the other thing that I did in the UK, um, brought a new crank seal here, the inner crank seal, because uh, I'm assuming that the one that's on it is the original. The one that was on the bike originally and has now come off of it, it didn't want to go on very well, so I don't know whether it was damaged when they um, took it off. Anyway, let's get this apart and get those for surfaces cleaned. So that nut I was referring to was obviously the uh, one on the end of the uh, transfer gear from the end of the crank uh, shaft. Anyway, welcome to my Insta360 and look at me, I'm doing uh, double angle shots now of me in the workshop. I uh, won't bore you, bore you too much with this, um, but I'm definitely going to be using the Insta when we go riding out later in the year. So I'm handling things a little bit gingerly, as you can see. I'm just um, trying to reacquaint myself, really, with the engine, um, remembering what I did uh, all those weeks ago. Sorry for having to have uh, extended voiceover rather than live commentary, but... We had some roadworks kick off in the village and all you could hear was their noise and compressor going. So um, I had to delete the original uh, sound for it. So just taking off those um, bottom bolts, they were bottom nuts, I should say. They were only done up finger tight. Uh, just figuring out which socket is there because one or two of them just need a tight, slight helping hand to come off. And I'll get a little cup and uh, here I go. Yeah, just getting a little beaker there to put all the nuts and washers into so that um, I don't scatter them all over the workshop and all over the workbench. So just taking off those bottom nuts and shortly I shall be getting a little magnet on a stick because I've uh, dropped a nut down there amongst the crank mouldings. There we go. And I also need to pull off those washers. They're a little bit fiddly to get off just with your fingers. So that's it, that's the last one off. Just checking there's none left and I'll whip the engine over and start on the top. Okay, so we're gonna go on to time lapse now because uh, it's a bit boring watching me undoing nuts and bolts. So that's the clutch cover off, clutch basket out, taking out all the bits there that I need to remove so that I can split the two halves of the crankcase and Voila, there it is done. You just saw me at the end of that piece of time that's starting to clean down the two halves of the crankcase. Here I found some corrosion. Um, I'm trying to focus in on it there. Uh, hopefully that won't cause an air leak, which we think is one of the problems uh, that the engine had in the first place. I'm taking a look at the crankshaft now, um, specifically looking at that small inner seal that uh, sits behind the transfer gear and the main engine oil seal there. So I'm just uh, taking all of that off to expose the inner oil seal. As I, as I said earlier, I think that might be the original one and I'm not overly confident that it's still secure. So let's have a closer look at the crankshaft. Um, there behind the woodruff key, which I've already taken out, is that small oil seal. And I'm convinced that's the original oil seal from 1977. So having brought a new one from Yambits while I was back in the UK, I just gent want to gently prise that old one out to see its condition, but replace it anyway. So here's that new... Uh, nut that I brought that holds on the transfer gear on the end of the crankshaft and um, it goes on really very easily um, all the way down to the end of the threads without any problem whatsoever whereas the uh, old one the original one 
won't uh, won't go on at all. It just goes on a few uh, threads and then starts to bind up. Now, whether that was damaged in getting it off, because like I said to you in the previous RD video, it was really, really tight and I didn't want to chance it and break the crank. So the new one seems to have done the trick, picking out the old O-ring now, that one that sits inside the bearing there. And once I get it in front of the camera, that has been an O-ring too long. Now it didn't feel as if it broke when I took it out. Uh, I just gently put the top of the pick into the thick part of the O-ring, the piece that sits down behind the woodruff key. And it gently came out on its own without any prying or levering behind it. So I'm wondering whether that thing was broken and that was what has been causing one of the potential issues with the engine, which has been the air leak. Um, as many of you have said, it could well have been an air leak that caused that detonation. So I'm just having a look at the new O-ring now, just making sure that it goes in the right way round and sits neatly in where that woodruff key goes. And to help it on its way, I'm just gonna put in a little bit of engine oil just to uh, ease that O-ring over the end of the crankshaft and seat it in behind or inside that bearing. So now I'm just gently pressing that seal into place. And using the blunt part, the bend of that pick, just to gently seat it in there before I put on the oil seal and the transfer gear and its lock nut. And as for the main oil seal itself, I'm putting that in with the castellations on the inside. I believe that's the right way it goes. It goes on. Please comment me straight away if I've done it wrong because um, the crank hopefully will be going back into the engine pretty soon. So I've slid on the new oil seals, both sides of the crank, and I'm just putting a little bit of engine oil around them and on them to just help them sit inside the engine cases. So I've just sat the crank into the crank case just to see how it looks really. Um, I'm not getting the cylinders back until tomorrow and I wanna do something else with those cylinders before I put the two halves of the engine together. So this was just a little drive run to remind myself that it's all coming together. Again, there's a crank seal. Let me know if I've put that in the wrong way. It would be really helpful to know now rather than once I've sandwiched the whole thing back together again and talked it all down. So yeah, making progress, very, very happy. Just having a look at the top part of the crankcase. And again, I've cleaned up all of the surfaces there, a little bit of white spirit and uh, soft cloth just to wipe it all off. Now it's all sitting with the little pegs, if you like, if the on the bearings just sitting in those recesses. Apologies for the extended voiceover, but we had uh, some roadworks in the village. It's just stopped. So here's the engine. I've just dropped the crank in. Well, really to see what it looks like. New crank seal um, and new seal here on the big end bearing. It's big end bearing main bearing, this bearing, it popped out easily enough. Now I think, I think it was already like that. I don't think my pulling it out broke it. It is delicate, but I'm pleased I brought a new one. And new nut on here, that goes on nice and easily. I think I showed you the other one where it seemed to be binding. So I think it might have been damaged when they took it off to uh, rebuild the crank. So, the plan is tomorrow I go and pick up the cylinders at last. Uh, they've been rebored and honed. Um, I forget what Sebastian said he was doing today with them. Something else he had to do, so he can't go and get them until mid-morning tomorrow. That's a little bit of a schlep, so we'll go after breakfast. 
and that's it so join me again tomorrow when we'll take a look at the cylinders we might have a chat with sebastian if he's uh, not camera shy now tell me what you think about this i could rebuild it couldn't i i could put the top on the engine now and the gasket sealant on and do it but i'm not i'm holding on and i'm holding on for this reason so i'd appreciate your comments I was going to put the cylinders on, bolt them down, and then look from underneath to see whether there's any port matching can be done or needs to be done. I've seen a video on it, so um, I want to have a look at it myself. So your advice would be appreciated in the comments. Other than that, I shall see you in the next one.